How's it going, my fellow nerdy printers? I'm Nerdy Printer, you can also call me Link. And today we're gonna take a whole bunch of 3D printed parts and turn it into the 3D printed saw cleaver from Bloodborne handle edition. Uh, next week, or later this week, we'll be doing the blade. But for right now, check out this handle. Let's get started, shall we? All right, so we are now starting on the prep end stage of the handle of the Bloodborne saw blade. Now I've already assembled and sanded most of this. I've left this section to show you. I do wish I remembered to show you how I plastic welded. That's where I plunge into a hot iron, or actually, I have the tool right here. So this is what I like to call a pyro pen. Basically, it's a metal end that heats up. Uh, it's mainly used for wood burning and also soldering. You can also use it for uh, joining together two plastic pieces. So that's, I basically just heated it up and sunk it right in. And that's how I um, assembled these pieces together. I will show more in depth about that when I assemble the blade part. I just forgot to film that. So then I filled it in with some mini wax sandable wood filler. It's actually really nice. It's impact resistant. Um, it dries and holds things really together. It's like a blend of plastic. So that's why it's uh, it just made to look like wood. Now you can obviously still see the areas on where I plunge in, and that's by design for me at least. I like the setting of it on the pink silver to make them look like rods or bolts in there, so that's mainly why I'm leaving it in there. And you can also see that I didn't perfectly sand all of these areas because I want this to look fun. I don't want this to look smooth, polished, and finished. In Bloodboard, nothing looks like that. So we are going to be doing some simple steps here. We're going to be using some 150 grit and then also 220 grit uh, to uh, sand all the uh, high points, the low points we're going to leave of this. And then we're going to be filling the last of the plastic weld holes with some mini wax sandable wood filler. So let's get sanding, shall we? All right, so, all right, so the 120 grit I am pleased with that we are now moving on to the 220 or the 150 grit is done now moving on to the 220 so that's what we're gonna be using now uh, you can pick these up from Walmart like these sandable things are like under five bucks so that's where I got those same with this Walmart five bucks I forgot to mention though that um, in between the plastic welds around here are actually like Gorilla super glue um, it's really strong, it helps keep it into place, and then also helps me so I can get the alignment correctly. I would recommend something that dries really, really fast, but like really, really strong. Especially since I'm not doing the method where you also plastic weld around the seams. Because I'm just, I don't really want to do that. To that part, I am a lazy person. Even though I wish I wasn't. On to the mini wax. And on this, it's really easy. Um, you can use gloves, but honestly, I just use really easy my fingers. All right, so it has been about two hours, so the wood filler should be fully set in. I'm gonna go over, I'm gonna briefly go over again with some 220 grit, and then we are going to dust it all off, get all the um, 
rest of the powder off or like the sanding bits and then we are going to start priming so let's get that one started shall we oh before i forget i was able to repair this with some plastic and some wood filler so it works actually pretty fine and before i get to the dusting process i do want to show you so i do have to get a different screw actually a couple different screws but this fits in together just fine. Just gotta make sure I line up the holes. And the trigger goes on there really nice. And these two fit together perfectly and go in here perfectly. So that's really, really cool. Do have to get some smaller screws though, but that are longer. Come on, get these off. All right. Next time you see this, this will be primed up, and we'll see what we're working with then. But yeah. Uh, so quick update before I go into the painting process. Um, I basically had a failure right here for holding it when I was testing it with the blade. So I overdid the new plastic welding instead of the plastic peg on there. I replaced it with a wooden dowel. So that's what I did right there. Have to sand this area down, um, put some wood filler on there, but then we'll still be moving on to the painting process. So learning curve, but everywhere else is holding up pretty well. All right, so we are starting on the paint. I forgot to mention what we uh, the colors were before I started painting this part, which turned out really nice. I did two coats of this, and that is the Rust-Oleum uh, Gloss Kona. It's a paint and primer. It's this one right here. It's a really nice wood color. It's also one of the few wood colors that I could find in spray paint. Now I did lose some of the detail doing that, so what I'm going to do is go over this with a black spray paint, and then uh, before it dries with some paper towels, wipe off off the excess, so all the black stays in the low areas, and the high areas you still see the Kona. That's what I'm planning on doing with that. And for the metal accents, like this uh, down here, like right here, and then I have some plans to do some rings around this area but if that works out i'll show you later um with this metallic brilliant this one right here it's like a nice bronze color and then for the trigger mechanism i'm going to be uh this is also the same i'm going to be doing for the blade it's called um, rust-oleum's universal forged hammer paint primer all in one it's called anti antique pewter and it already looks pitted with age so that's why I'm going to be doing that. Plus, it's still a metallic color. It still looks like steel, but old. So that's what I'm going to be doing with that. So yeah, time for the paint process. All right, guys, to give you more of an overview of what I've done so far after most of the painting process is done, um, instead of the black spray paint method that I advertised here, I actually used some black shoe polish and that actually worked really nicely because it uh, takes a little while to dry but you can also mess around with it a lot so that's what I did to highlight the definition of the, the patterns in here and the grooves but to give you an overview of what I've done so far before we get to the wrapping phase um, I put some paracord around here. Um, I did it in different colors. I also um, did so. Uh, I did it in bronze, silver. Um, this is all just paracord. This um, I will tell you more about this part right here uh, once we get the blade part because spoiler, I've already actually done the entirety of the blade. Um, so yeah, obviously you know that from printing it. What you might not know is that I've also actually already painted it and almost everything is done with that besides the final part that I'm about to talk to you now. Well, right after this. But then I also did some silver paracord wrappings here, and the bronze turned out really nicely. This piece right here is actually for the blade itself. So 
Um, you'll know more about that once the, uh, you see the blade being completed and me testing it out. But let's just say this is to help cushion it when it swings back into its closed position right here. This will be covered up in, and this is the final part that we will be working on, is actually the gauze slash bandage wrapping that's going to be around um, the entire handle and blade. Now, I've got about five of these, or four or five of these. I might have to get more, but um, obviously these were just stark white when I first got them. Now they look dirty and grungy, and that is a combination of tea and coffee. Um, and yes, and then I will be doing another thing once both the blade and, and the handle is completed. I have also some fake blood that will stain a lot, and that will be going into certain areas as well on that, and then that will be done. So yeah, I'm going to start wrapping this and I'll check on you afterwards. Alright, and we are pretty much done with the handle. I Again, I still haven't gotten a different bolt for this piece right here. I still need to get the M330mm, but I can't find it anywhere. So I'm, I'm still looking. Otherwise, I have an idea of taking this screw and chopping off the head, putting it in, in here, and literally just getting some like hot glue, some black hot glue or, or to make it look like it's in there. And that will also be able to make it so that you can get out at any time with this hot glue. And just uh, take a, a screwdriver into it or uh, like a thin, sharp uh, knife and just puncture through here and get the grip. All I really need is for the, 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 the screw on the inside to hold its place. But here we have it and it is basically done. Looks absolutely amazing, all the detail. Now this is a combination of Amazon's Vampire Blood and some brown acrylic. So yeah, I actually went through a couple different versions of how to wrap this and then I um, centered on this. Uh, this version as well is the cleanest looking one. It uh, covered up the cushion really nicely. And this just looks dirty. I also, for the head, I sprayed some of the fake blood on it and then just let it dry so it looks like the blood has been drying on there. Am I happy with how the, the red dried on the wrapping? I'll say so-so. I wish it dried a little bit darker, but it still looks absolutely amazing. And again, I still have the five elastic bands. They are to hold, um, I'll, I'll just tell you now, uh, they are to hold the, uh, the trigger down in a down position, especially when the blade is closed, because I've noticed um, when the blade is closed, I and mean, if you hold it like this with the blade down here, it doesn't want to stay. So. I just came up with a really easy solution to keeping it like that. Once I get better at 3D modeling on Mesh Mixer, I will probably add a pin on uh, this through the blade itself so I can just remove that when I'm ready to do anything. That way, it'll keep it in a static position. And I actually made do with altering the nuts on here, like the plastic pieces that you would screw the M30 nut by literally um, plastic welding a nut onto the inside of this. So I didn't have to buy another screw because I'm still not sure if I'm going to be able to find an M3 30mm. So yeah, absolutely fantastic. I'll get some close-up pictures of this, but this is done. And we are moving on to the blade. I was actually thinking about just making the blade and this uh, all one video. But um, it's just going to end up being too long. So yeah, we are done with it. So let's get some close-up pictures and uh, we'll start working on the, we'll start uh, painting and prepping and finishing the blade. See you guys next time.